2007 was a tremendous year in sports, and I will break it all down, the good, the bad, and the ridiculous. As we begin our look back, here is what I am burning on. For more than a decade, there has been widespread illegal use of anabolic steroids and other performance-enhancing substances by players in Major League Baseball. 2007 was the year the cover was blown off of baseball's dirty little secret, performance-enhancing drugs. Most notably, with Barry Bonds finally getting his asterisk. No sooner than home run 756 bounced off the seats, Barry immediately began defending his mark. This record is not tainted at all. At all. Period. You guys can say whatever you want. Not tainted at all. If by not tainted you mean about the most tainted thing ever, then yes, it's not tainted at all. Come to find out, that asterisk that fashion designer Mark Echo hit that ball with was the very least of Barry Bonds' worries. Even Barry would take an asterisk over a stretch in the can. Bonds' myopians have always insisted he's never tested positive for anything. Well, according to the federal indictment hanging over his head, along with the Mitchell report that confirmed what we'd all long suspected, he did test positive for roids. He may as well stamp his bigger-than-it-used-to-be forehead with the word indicted because that's now as much his legacy as any of the 762 bombs that he hit. And save this nonsense about how sad it was for Barry Bonds. Pathetic, perhaps, but not sad. Pathetic that the guy was already headed straight to the Hall of Fame and it still wasn't good enough. Pathetic that the guy was already one of the greatest players in the history of the game, but apparently was so jealous of Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa that he started to load up on beef roids to the point where his head grew big enough that he might float right out of the batter's box and right into a hot air balloon race. And while the Mitchell report demonstrated that Bonds was not the only guy doing drugs, if he was, he's still the most important one. He made his steroid-riddled bed, and now he has to lay down in that bed full of syringes and just deal with it. That's not sad. That's appropriate. I want to apologize to all the young kids out there for my immature acts. And, uh, you know, if what I did was, what I did was very immature, so that means... I need to grow up. Never has an athlete fallen farther, faster than Michael Vick, who was sentenced to 23 months in federal prison for running a dogfighting ring. Michael Vick might be fast, but he's not fast enough to outrun the feds or his own stupidity. I mean, exactly what was he thinking? Admittedly, I haven't gotten up and crawled, crawled around in too many dogfighters' heads, but exactly what did he get out of this? He got sent to the big house, his reputation is shot, and for what? money he could fish out of his own ashtray because he had some ill dog killing Jones that he just had to feed next time buy an Xbox that was worth throwing away the 120 million dollar lottery ticket that he was holding on to that's not about keeping it real or about Vic not being able to cut off his crew who led him down this road that's about a cat with crazy game who's really not that bright doing what he wanted when he wanted without once stopping to think about the consequences and two of the most compelling athletes of the year were A-Rod and Kobe, but for some of the wrong reasons. Alex's season in the Bronx was a year-long circus, from shouting at that pop-up in Toronto to his wife rocking an F-bomb t-shirt, but it all paled in comparison to A-Rod and his agent Scott Forrest opting out during the last game of the World Series. Before A-Rod negotiated with his super agent, or without him, and headed back to the Yankees, for somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 years and 280 million bucks. Yeah, great, you got your money, but at what cost? He was hammered unmercifully for being a mercenary and for that unforgivable pub grab. You talk about arrogant. That opt-out was a big screw you to the Red Sox and the Rockies, really to all Major League Baseball. The even though I've never won anything significant, I'm still bigger, bigger than the game. Play. The ultimate look at me moment. And clearly he blamed his agent for it or he would not have gone back to the Yankees and negotiated without him. As for Kobe Bryant, he went on a summer media tour where he told anybody and everybody who would listen, including some kooks with a camera phone outside of a Pomodoro, that he wanted out of L.A. But the Lakers still could not part with the only reason anybody has to enter Staples Center. With him, the Lakers still matter. Without him, they're the Atlanta Hawks or even worse, the Knicks. Those front-running, bandwagoning Laker fans booed Kobe on opening night, but when the ball went up, 24 did what he always does. He competed like a mother, and L.A. fan did what he always does, flip and do a 180. 
And before you know it, the boos turn to cheers, and then the chance of MVP, MVP, and then the standing O's. Once again, welcome to the circus, only in L.A. First and ten at the Colt 13, direct snap to Brady. Fires down the middle, it's caught by Falk. He drives it in! Touchdown! Patriots have spent the entire 07 season trying to jam anyone and everyone who accused them of cheating. And what an unbelievable year it's been. Randy Moss revitalized his career. Tom Brady has been nearly perfect. And the hoodie had his team focused and looking to lay a beat down on somebody every single week. But come to find out they are not the NFL's model franchise, not if their head coach cheats. And according to the NFL, Bill Belichick did. Not that he cares. Not only is the hoodie not about to give back the rings he's already won, he's going to run the table and win another one just to prove that while he may have cheated, that's not the reason he has a drawer full of jewelry. Spygate was a black eye for the NFL, but referee Tim Donaghy, allegedly gambling on games that he worked, was rock bottom for the NBA. Not that Commissioner David Stern could have done anything to prevent it. I think I'm going to come back to the fact that I'm going to wait for this investigation to run its course because we think we have here a rogue, isolated criminal. Well, if the right safeguards were in place and there's nothing wrong with the system and you were still the very last one to know, how do you know it's an isolated case and that it won't happen again? The answer is you don't. Fans always wonder if the zebras are on the take and now they may have finally found one that was. David Stern better hope that Donaghy was just one rogue, isolated criminal because once the public's trust has been violated, it is nearly impossible to get back.